In this video, we want to develop a sense for the different kinds of observations that can be made with the EM31 and the EM34. So remember, with each instrument, we've got, uh, well, in the case of the EM31, we have a set intercrawl spacing. And with the EM34, we have uh, three different uh, uh, spacings of 10, 20, and 40 meters. So these coils can be oriented to produce either a vertical or a horizontal dipole field. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the intercrawl spacing and the operating frequency are varied as we, we discussed. So the EM31 and the EM34 together provide four different intercoil spacings and two different coil orientations. So it's possible for us to get a total of eight separate measurements at an individual survey point. So first let's uh, just come back to some basic ideas and uh, <clears throat> associated with um, current flow, coil or orientation, and field orientation. So if we have a current loop here, and we have current flowing around the uh, coil, and it's coming from inside the screen to outside, so we're coming out like this. Remember the right-hand rule. Uh, which way would the field lines be pointing? And in this case, if we wrap our right hand around the coil with our thumb pointing in the direction of current flow. Our fingers will come up through the coil and point upward. So we have a vertical field in this case, a vertical dipole field in this case. And over here we have the current coming from in the out or out, we're going into the into the board, into the uh, into the screen here. So if we wrap our fingers again around the coil with our um, thumb pointed in the direction of current flow, we'll see that the fingers kind of come through the inside of the coil, pointing uh, from right to left. So in this case, the dipole field is oriented horizontally. So we have these two field orientations, a vertical field and a horizontal field. And, uh, <clears throat> and you might just you know, think about uh, drawing in the uh, field lines there, but that's, that's not necessary. The basic idea is that we do have, depending on how we orient the instrument, uh, orient the coils, we will have um, uh, vertical or horizontal dipoles. So in this case, uh, you know, when we're taking a look at the uh, uh, EM31 or the EM34, uh, the, the normal mode of operation would be to have coplanar horizontal coils so that we're going to have a vertical dipole. <clears throat> the current will be flowing around these loops. The, uh, the field orientation will be, be vertical, either pointing upward or downward. Um, in the case of the AM31, the intercrawl spacing is fixed. Uh, in the case of the M34, we have these three different measurements. Now, in this case, the dipole field is going to be vertical. However, if you remember, you know, looking at some previous slides, we saw a slide where they had the loops between their legs standing up. So that would give you a horizontal field. For the EM31, you can take this instrument, rotate it over on your hip, and get a horizontal dipole measurement. So it's possible to get vertical dipole measurements and horizontal dipole measurements for each intercrawl spacing. 3.67, 10, 20, and 40. So that gives you a total of eight, eight measurements.
<clears throat> so again, you might come back, take a look at the, um, you know, think about current flow, think about the orientations of field lines, uh, giving us the vertical dipole here. If we were to rotate those into the to the uh, vertical plane, we'd have a horizontal dipole, and so on. So, coil and dipole orientation are important because they give you different exploration depths. The uh, vertical dipole orientation gives you a greater depth of penetration. We'll, we'll talk about that later on. Um, the horizontal dipole, the field lines don't penetrate as deeply, so we get a shallower depth of uh, penetration. But uh, as we vary the intercoil spacing, we're getting a, a we're, we're exploring a different range of depths. We're getting different apparent conductivities, and that gives us a feeling for how the ground conductivity or how the subsurface conductivity varies with depth, and gives us a kind of a varying depth of exploration. So the orientation of the dipole is critical to providing these differences in depth of investigation. And you'll run across this idea of a rule of thumb, which states that for the AMP31, 3.67 meter, 10, 20, and 40, in a horizontal dipole sense, we get about three quarters of the intercoil spacing is, is our depth of penetration. Whereas with a vertical dipole, we get about 1.5 times this intercoil spacing. So it's, it's a very rough, crude estimate of what the depth of exploration is, and you really shouldn't rely on this. Um, it's, it's, you know, the actual, there is no actual depth of penetration. You're seeing a composite view of the response of the subsurface from the near surface down to a certain maximum depth. And that maximum depth very often depends on the conductivity of the deeper layers. So if you have a high conductivity deeper layer, you're very likely to see it even though it's outside this so-called exploration uh, exploration depth. So keep that in mind when you run across the uh, concept of an exploration depth. And um, next time we're going to have a brief discussion of basic definitions and units. And we've been assuming as we've gone along here that you have some background on um, you know, basic basic physics. So we haven't really presented a uh, you know thorough overview of um, of uh, the basic physics behind this. But we will talk about some basic definitions and units next time. So until then, thanks for joining us.